have domestic political differences, even large differences, but those differences shouldn't be used as tools by people with dubious um, interests from outside the country to once again subjugate us to whatever we went through. Resignation of Anil Antony, son of tall Congress leader A.K. Antony, once again proves that no self-respecting individual who thinks for the nation, speaks for nation's integrity and sovereignty can remain in the Congress party. Not even 24 hours had passed since Anil K. Antony, KPCC digital media head and national co-coordinator of social media of the Congress party, had voiced his opinion on the BBC documentary, cautioning that no one should keep the voice of our former colonial subjugators above Indian institutions. The Congress member from Kerala has had to quit his duties. He is hit out at the Congress party for being intolerant and promoting sycophancy. And he's joining me now on the show. Anil, thanks a lot for speaking to me once again. We spoke yesterday and it hasn't even been 24 hours when you expressed your views on the BBC documentary opposing those giving more weightage to that than the Indian court's verdict and you've had to quit your position from the Congress party. What exactly happened? Could you tell me the reasons why you were getting the kind of reactions that made you take this call? See, a lot of things have been brewing for a while, but mm. at the end of the day, like certain incidents that escalated in the last 24 hours actually makes me think that at this moment, I am a misfit in certain this organization because of many reasons. So in the morning yesterday, like it was a very normal day. I made a tweet. The tweet is up for the world to see. Yeah. And in the tweet, what I have said is also very clearly written. The, there are four lines in it where I clearly say that I am a person with a lot of strong differences of opinion with the BJP at the same time. When it comes to certain things, which is actually uh, issues that are pertaining to our core national interest, including um, in core national interest, including our sovereignty. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to certain issues where you feel that certain external entities could threaten the sanctity of our institutions, then mm -hmm. I feel that we should actually let partisan politics go because end of the day, our partisan politics cannot go above national interest. And I feel that this is something 99% of this population of this country will agree with me also. And mm. I made an innocuous tweet just insinuating that plus also saying that let's say this is a documentary that is there. Great. I'm not against any freedom of expression. In fact, I am a Democrat of the highest order mm. and I'm very happy that I'm proud of the fact that we are a country uh, where, uh, which is the largest, um, eco uh, the largest democracy in the world, the oldest democracy in the world. Okay. And a country like ours, it is very important that we actually encourage and sustain freedom of speech and expression. So I'm not really against the screening of any documentary, any film, any movie. This is not the issue here. But I did raise a concern that end of the day, this particular documentary comes from a certain place and that is uh, that the same people who are behind the documentary are the same people who are responsible for uh, the uh, propagation of the Iraq war and the weapons of mass destruction yeah. uh, theory etc which resulted in a horrible conflict where mm. uh, lakhs of people were killed and millions of people were displaced and mm. when these kind of dubious people actually bring a create a project and bring it to the country i certainly feel that we as indians should be concerned about and these different different thoughts i just actually created a little tweet and i tweeted but somehow a lot of people got very very riled by that and they wanted me to uh, let's say um, pull back the tweet or give an apology or some people in Kerala were actually saying that they are going to take action against me or expel me from the party etc etc and I think this is all nonsense because end okay. of the day I don't think I have said anything wrong end of the day I have stood by my own convictions and here is somebody who uh, let's say because they live in certain la la land and they live in certain grand areas of delusion they disagree with what 99% of this country think and that is that partisan politics should never come 
become a above national well that is something that the congress party has been accused of but given I'm that you're saying that 99% of the country thinks like this anil i do want to point out to you that your colleague someone who has helped you in the past someone you worked with very closely in the past sashi tarur also said that he disagrees with you he says that this documentary cannot put india's integrity and sovereignty at risk how would you like to respond to that see end of the day i don't know about dr tarur's statement and like i said dr tarur is somebody who i absolutely have the highest of regards for hmm. and when compared to my congress colleagues also like end of the day like we had no disagreements on the let's say screening of this documentary in any manner i am not against the screening of this documentary in any manner the only thing which i actually said was this like end of the day we should be cautious about where it comes, comes from. from okay and the second thing is end of the day you shouldn't create a long term precedents where let's say you should let foreign institutions and foreign organizations actually have a bigger say over our national institutions or make our national institutions integrity be weakened because that in the long so i am not saying this documentary is actually going to create any uh, kind of sovereignty issue in this country so, uh, our india sovereignty and our strength is way 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 bigger than all this but okay. at the day certain things lead to certain things and we shouldn't let certain precedences happen because in the long run it is a dangerous trend that is all i okay. said you've been very harsh in fact and very categorical in your criticism of the congress party also while announcing your resignation and even in your resignation letter it feels like you'd had enough of the sycophant culture as you said in the party see end of the day whatever i have written is very self explanatory and whoever reads it they will exactly understand why i am saying it and about who i am telling about if you are looking at some of the things that have happened in the last few years hmm. in the party it is not just me like end of the day i haven't left anywhere but so many stall when compared to many of the stalwarts who left i'm just a little nobody baby but so many people who have been working in this party for four decades five decades six decades my dad's contemporary so many senior union ministers chief ministers even some of our young leaders who are our best uh, people as far as potential is concerned they were all leaving one by one by one why is mm. this happening because end of the day there should something is wrong somewhere end of the day like you can't behave like ostriches which actually just want to have your head under the stand and think that everything is okay and just because you are blind doesn't mean that the world is not blind to whatever is happening so okay. there are issues but end of the day i don't think there is anybody in this organization that is concerned to concerned about even hearing about issues like and like end of the day right now things have become a one way street where let's say people just talk like a radio like things come this way but there is no feedback the other way and end of the day i have been seeing all this for the last one two years okay so end of the day this is all distressing and like from where i come from and my um, uh, let's say my professional qualifications and my academic qualifications and my professional life etc when compared to that i think right now whatever is happening is very trivial and a waste of my time and i think i have better things to do which is what i am pursuing at this moment I was going to ask you about the leadership. Are you not disappointed that someone like Rahul Gandhi who has said that you know the Congress has internal democracy, they stand for free speech, he hasn't really stood up for you or defended your right to voice your opinion. Even Jairam Ramesh who dismissed Digvijay Singh's comment on surgical strikes as a personal opinion hasn't come out and defended you for your right to speak. So end of the day Uh, this is what i am disappointed by because i am somebody who actually have the highest of regards for mr rahul gandhi and whatever efforts he is actually doing to unite that country uh, with a walk from uh, kanyakumari to kashmir spreading the message of love spreading the message of unity and sadly i am sad for him because these are the kind of people around him who actually stands for nothing he stands for they are actually the epitome of hate the epitome of while they are the epitome of the worst of everything which is completely opposite of what mr rahul gandhi is actually standing for and with these kind of people i don't think this will reach anywhere final question several would say as has been the case with those who have left the congress party before that you're doing all of this because ultimately you want to join the bjp so i do have to ask you are you planning to join the bjp next 
this is all ridiculous nonsense like end of the day like i said very clearly like i have no intention to go anywhere i have no intention to join anybody nor do i have an have any intention to join any political party or pursue any kind of politics at this moment at okay. this moment my primary focus is my professional life and my professional career which i think uh, is in an area which is the driver of the world right now which is technology and i'll be very happy working in that right now okay i thank you for joining us and making your views heard it is a sad state of affairs frankly what has happened and transpired with anil antony just for a tweet on an issue let me open this up to our guests also joining us Savio Rodriguez is founder Goa Chronicles he's also with the BJP Tushar Gupta senior editor Swaraj magazine advocate Matthew Anthony spokesperson of the INC Javed Ahmed Ansari senior journalist Sanjay Jha former INC leader and political analyst also joining us I do thank all of you for your time and for your patience Sanjay I'm coming to you because you've been in a position similar to Anil Anthony for voicing your opinion disciplinary action was taken against you you've been suspended since and continue to be suspended he wasn't suspended but he's saying there was a wall of hate on his facebook congress supporters were hounding him targeting him kerala unit he said there were people who threatened him he was getting threatening calls frankly this has become a joke to send a message of love on one hand but internally this happens to your own party people just for what just for the fact that he disagreed a little bit with the party line uh shivani good evening to you and all the panelists and it's great to be with my friend matthew anthony he and i have worked together for a long time so matthew great to be with you on the show uh let me make my Thank statement you, very succinct and to the point uh anil was right and so is the congress i'll tell you why because i have remained suspended but you know i do respect where the party comes from hmm. now i was critical of the party's leadership i was very upset about the way they were not fighting against the bjp hmm. and i raised certain uncomfortable questions in the public domain i was exactly and fully aware of what the consequences could be i totally agree with you shivani that i wish the congress was more open and more accommodative of a divergent opinion within but i'm also mature enough and a seasoned enough guy i'm not born yesterday to know that political parties do remain a uh, you know a lot more uh, sensitive or thin skin when it comes to certain criticism which might make it uh, uh, make a new sense of it in terms of a public spectacle i think anil anthony should have been left alone because i don't think the congress had to overreact hmm. on the other hand anil anthony should also have been aware that on a sensitive issue because the 2002 gujarat riots the bbc documentary are sensitive subjects i mean after all the prime minister of this country is under a spotlight which is not very favorable at all and if rahul gandhi has publicly taken a position saying that truth is finally emerging then i think anil anthony should have known what the consequences no, can be no i think his tweet came earlier his tweet came before rahul gandhi's statement but the well, central point continues to be why hound him out well can i tell you one thing shivani if in politics you're not thick skinned then i don't think you deserve to be there and i'm not a dynastic succession guy his father has been a veteran congressman and in politics if you say that you know i got trolled and therefore i panic no but Sa sanjay that's not that's fair not the congress people. party comes to the defense of those who get uncomfortable comments from people on social media when it suits them but here's your own guy who's getting hounded by your own people and getting threats and hate messages you're just saying oh you're getting trolled i find that duplicitous of the congress party because they shout from the rooftops if even one bad comment comes against someone they want to highlight but let me bring in the congress spokesperson this is becoming a bad advertisement for your party sir that's the fundamental point young people just do not feel they can be progressive with their views and they continue to leave you and all of them say the same things when they leave you that this is a party of sycophants nobody likes any divergent view leadership doesn't listen he said you're living in la la land thank you shivani and uh, sanjay good to be with you in a panel uh, and uh, thanks to all other panelists too let me put a few statements here one is we have at most respect to sir ak antony who is a senior most leader and who still holds a very senior position within the party and is well respected and is consulted by the party leadership at any point of time before any major decisions 
the second point is on a sensitive issue like the gujarat riots we have made our stand very clear from the time of the gujarat riots till now that we stand and we have a we have an opinion about the gujarat riots and the people behind it now this happened 20 years back and at that point of time the said person is narendra modi gujarat chief minister the bbc documentary is about narendra modi not about india so we should be very specific we should not generalize it as a document against india it is a document against an individual who is currently holding the post of prime minister in india but about his political choices which he has made to become the prime minister of the country or to make his political ambitions uh, fruitful uh this is where we stand and now without going and studying the documentary without going and understanding how the godra incidents happened and the history of it as a learned educated man making a making a statement in public stating that it is affecting the sovereignty of the country where it is not and then taking the irritation of the party workers which is not which is not orchestrated but it is individual opinion the party has officially nothing to do with it and as rightly sanjay said you know being in politics and being in social media needs a thick skin and that's where it has happened so the party has officially not asked anil to step down it is his own independent decision yeah. individual decision to step down he made his opinion but at the same time the party the party leadership as well as individual leaders from rahul former congress president rahul gandhi and to all other leaders have just reassured our opinion on the subject so this no, is where it is like no, i don't no, see any fair enough the party is very within well within its right we, we to have a certain view, view. and rahul gandhi address that view and nobody question that view but you know I'll, I'll let me i since i have limited time unfortunately i'll take this to some of my other guests also savio the point is here this you keep saying you stand for love you stand for unity you stand for diversity there is an internal democracy in your party you stand for freedom of speech and then this happens to your party person and what is so earth shattering about what anil antony said he actually spoke to me and said categorically my views on gujarat are not different than the congress party but i feel as far as this documentary is concerned let's not project it as higher than indian courts because remember this documentary is coming after the supreme court clean chit that's the uh, context in which we must see this documentary savio well shivani i'd like to make three points and thank you for having invited me the first point is taking off from where what sanjay jha said he mentioned the fact that if rahul gandhi has made a statement then you should follow the line of rahul gandhi i'm sorry we live in a democracy i belong to a political party as well if i disagree with the political party's point of view i think i'm within my right to raise that point of view so we need to stop this psychophancy culture that exists in political parties starting with the congress party because what mr anthony said whether he agreed with what the, what was in the documentary or not the moot point was he had a point of view and he did not need to be hounded for that and that's where the problem with the congress is happening when you have a point of view and you get hounded for that you get uh, you get castigated for that that's when you start depleting the confidence of people who are being with you number 1 number 2 in politics you don't need to have a thick skin i'm sorry the most important thing you need to have in politics is an ability to tell the truth in the interest of the country and also have your ear on the ground look at the yes. sentiment the that's truth, what the anil anthony is saying the congress Now, is not back, keeping the sentiment of the public the at the front the most important thing is the bbc documentary while the congress and the opposition might be very happy of the contents in that documentary hmm. let us hmm. also be very truthful and and honest about the fact that the supreme court has passed a judgment yeah. on all the allegations that were leveled on prime minister modi so are you telling me the congress and the opposition and sanjay jha laughing out there are you higher than the supreme court can i can is i give the bbc a quick higher response, than the supreme court I... because we all know that bbc is is basically the british bullshitting company so are you still suffering from a colonial hangover answer him quickly wake shivani up, yeah. sanjay shivani, wake up yes. congress this is about india this is about a man that represents india no no i think that fundamental point has I been made on this documentary for the last power. three days i have limited I'm time let me give an opportunity power. to all of our guests if, if i have time i'll go back to our previous power. speakers tushar javed sir i'm coming to you but tushar before that tushar here's the fundamental problem for the congress party today by its own people one by one who leave 
One is the culture of Chamchagiri, which Anil Antony is talking about. The second is you are not seen as standing with Indian interests. Now, I am not saying whether that's correct or not, but that's the perception. Your own people are saying and lambasting you while leaving this. And Ashwini Kumar has said this in the past. Uh, Gulab Nabi Azad has said this in the past. Even others have said that you can better serve the interests of the country outside of the Congress Party. Now, that's the fundamental problem for the Congress Party. Digvijay Singh opens his mouth, embarrasses the Congress Party day in, day out, just did it this week. No action on him. He doesn't get hounded. He gets protected. But Anil Antony must be hounded out. Shivani, Rahul Gandhi is unwilling to learn. It started with Chokidar Chorhe, then Adani Ambani ki Sarkar. Now they are filling on to a BBC documentary about 2002. It's, it's just appalling how Rahul Gandhi is unable to read the sentiment on the ground. Now, it's just about Anil Antony who wants to keep the national interest above the party interest. We have people like Sanjay Jha who have been suspended from the party for speaking for party's interests. So at the end of the day, when someone says there's diversity in the Congress, the diversity is only limited to as far as you can agree with Rahul Gandhi. When someone says Congress is all about love, it's only about love as long as Rahul Gandhi can tame those people. So the problem here is the Congress is losing its MPs, MLAs, its esteemed members one by one. But Rahul Gandhi is unwilling to learn. They want to pick up a stray documentary from 2002, disregard what the Apex Court has said, disregard what the Apex Court has said about some people using the victims of 2002 rights to peddle an anti-national agenda. They want to disregard all that but want to use a straight documentary to peddle their own political agenda. But this now, how just... are you going to win any elections Shivani like that? <coughs> how are you going to get the sentiment on the ground, right? If you're going to use a foreign corporation's documentary that disregards the, what the Supreme Court has said to yeah, win elections. Yeah, I don't want to make this about the documentary because frankly, we've debated it to death. But my point is, this is not just about Rahul Gandhi, Tushar. This is about the culture. He's not hounded by Rahul Gandhi per se, right? But who? But, but within who the Congress that culture, Party, there is no acceptance of the of the view that Anil had. But Shivani, who encourages that culture? Who comes on television and says, "Hamare jawano ko peet rahe hain, 2,000 square kilometer jagah China ko de di, desh ko bech diya." Who utters such foolish statements? It's Rahul Gandhi. The encouragement for this hounding is coming from the top. So at some point, one has to question: Is Rahul Gandhi unable to keep the party together? Okay. Because from the Can looks I frame of it, this slightly everyone is differently leaving. for Javed Ahmed Ansari. Javed sir, is it that anybody who's not openly bashing Narendra Modi? may even take a line that is slightly, you know, favorable to the union government of the time, which is headed by Narendra Modi. That view, right or wrong, is just not acceptable in the Congress party. You have to continue to hammer Narendra Modi or there is no space for you, no matter what sense you talk. Shivani, let's be fair. Which political party would allow? And there's a, there's a uh, very heavyweight, we have a lot of BJP supporters on the panel. Which, which would the BJP in this case have allowed somebody to to voice his opinion that, okay, what the BBC documentary is saying is, is fair, we should at least, it has not healed wounds. There may be closure of the issue, but it has not healed wounds. And there are people who have, people who've suffered are still hurting. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we need to take a second look. Would somebody have allowed that? Would the BJP have ever allowed that? And what Mr. Antony has not said or clarified or elaborated it, who is it that it was handling? My information is this is an internal affair, factionalism of the Kerala Congress to, to bring in the National Congress Party and all that. Mr. Antony uh, neither has the patience nor the luck of his father. His father, on at least a dozen occasions I can recall, had a contrarian view to that of, of his party leadership, hmm. and yet he occupied the highest positions and got the highest respect in the Congress Party. Hmm. Mr. Antony has, has been... Uh, at the wrong end of the feud within the Kerala Congress, and he's reacted to that. Nobody, to my knowledge, no senior Congress leader has has attacked him or criticized him or mm. pulled him up. He, okay. if, if they have, then he should name them. Okay. And as far as double standards is concerned, they publicly distanced themselves from uh, what Digvijay Singh said. He, in fact, they used some very strong words. They there did, is a they did, in a but of the he Congress keeps doing it and no reprimand comes. They should not have done. I get your point. I do thank all of our guests for joining us. I'll just add one thing, which is that, yes, no other party would have possibly allowed it either. But if you claim you are better than others and you stand for certain standards, then you have to depict that. You have to then walk the talk. Otherwise, people will not buy it. 
I'll end it at that. Very limited time today. Time for a very short break. Some updates on the other side.